Hello everyone. We want to welcome you to our webinar today. We're excited to have Pat Lackacher from Anovia Consulting joining us. And Pat will be presenting on getting your brain around licensing, full versus team users in Business Central. And before I pass it over to Pat to cover on this topic, I would like to remind you that this session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library for you to review and share with anyone. And we do ask that if you have any questions, please go ahead and type those into the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. And so now I'm going to pass it on to Pat to kick off our presentation. Thank you, Angie. Good morning and welcome, everyone. I am Pat Lackacher, and I'm one of the customer engagement specialists on the Inovia team. I have been working with NAV and Business Central for over 20 years in a variety of different roles. And today I'll be reviewing the different types of Business Central licensing with you. Tomorrow, I have another presentation in which I'll be reviewing the functionality within licensing. And that's going to occur at 11 o'clock. So I noticed that some of you have already joined. If there's something that I don't cover today that you're interested in finding out more about, please let me know at the end of the session and I'll either address it then or I'm happy to incorporate it into the presentation tomorrow. So with that, let's get started. Licensing can be confusing, so that's probably why you're attending this session. On top of this, Microsoft does not help the issue because they frequently are changing the way that the licensing works, even if by just changing the naming conventions. So the objective today is to take the mystery out of Business Central licensing and provide some clarity, which will help you determine what is the best licensing for you to use in your organization. In addition, I'm going to cover some of the license limitations that you should be aware of. So the topics that we're going to have today is I'm going to focus on Business Central, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the differences between NAV and Business Central, especially for any of the companies that may be attending that have NAV and they may be thinking about migrating to Business Central at some point. In addition, I'll be covering the types of available licensing, the differences between the licensing, limitations regarding the licenses that you should be aware of. And I'll go through some of the questions that you may ask to determine what is the best type of licensing for a particular user. We'll talk about the licensing costs. And finally, we'll have a time for a Q&A period. One of the biggest differences that you're going to find between the NAV versions and the Business Central is that on the on-prem versions with the NAV, we were able to use concurrent users. And what that means is that you could utilize one user license for multiple users. They, you could only have one person using that at a time, but you could actually have 10 people set up and as long, any of those 10 people could use that one license. Now with Business Central, we've moved to what we call a named model and each user will now need to have a named user license. So this is a big difference, especially if any of you have worked the older versions of NAV. However, when subscribing to either NAV or Business Central, those are both named users. We also have two types of users within the NAV and Business Central family. And these types of users is what dictates the functionality. So we have full users, and on both NAV and Business Central, they're both called full. However, we also offer additional users, and on the NAV side, it's called a limited user, and in Business Central, it's called a team user. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today, and then tomorrow I'll be focusing more on what some of the differences are. So. When deciding on how many users are required, you should always look at the number of individuals that are going to be accessing Business Central and then take a look at what their business functions are. Keep in mind that each individual named user allows a user 
to use their license for multiple devices. What I mean by that is if I'm Pat at Inovia.com and I have a license and I'm, I'm using Business Central, I can use that same license to access my Surface, my laptop, a phone. I can go to any device with that particular license. There's also what we call a device license. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but I just want to make you aware that the way that a device license works is that you could have a device, and it's typically used a lot in a warehouse where I might have multiple shifts. So I'm, not, I'm never going to have more than one person using that device at a time. So rather than buy three named user licenses, I can just buy one device license. So if anyone's doing anything in the warehouse, that's something that you may want to take a look at. Okay, there's two types of Business Central users. We have full users, and under full users, we have two different levels. We have an essential and a premium. And what the level means is that's what's dictating the functionality that that full user can have. And that's going to be the focus on tomorrow's session. Any license that is purchased for Business Central requires that you have at least one essential or one premium full user. And that's because all of the inherent functionality in NAV falls under a full user. In addition to full users, we have team users. And now on the next slide, I'm going to go through what some of these differences are. A full user would be a license that you want to set up for anyone that is doing a lot of functionality within Business Central. They're using a lot of the feature-rich business application functionality. Examples of full users would be people that are in customer service, finance, controllers, supply chain managers. These users have been often referred to as power or professional users, and they spend the majority of their day within Business Central. They're processing a lot of transactions, they're looking up a lot of data, they're doing posting. So though anyone that falls into that would be a full user. In addition, anyone that needs to post needs to be a full user. So if you have someone that's entering a purchase quote and then you want them to, and then it becomes a purchase order and you want them to be able to post the purchase order, they need to be a full user. Now companies may also have a need to allow other users in the company to access data from the system, not necessarily process transactions. Maybe they're gonna run reports. Um, they can also have a certain function that they're doing, like a small function, maybe all they're doing is entering time entry, or maybe they're updating some HR records, or they're entering a quote. Okay, all of these types of people could be a team user. Many times, people at the executive management level can be a team user because they're just running reports and they're going into access data. They're really not doing anything at the transactional level. So I wanted to go over a couple of license limitations. When you're talking about either a team or a limited user, which is a scaled down type of user, as I mentioned before, the two key items or takeaways I would say is you cannot post, okay? And then they have limited write capabilities. So these type of users can still do some type of writing, like as I mentioned, time entry, or they could enter a quote, um, they can do some work with customers and vendors and items as far as um, doing some updating, but they're certainly not super users. For anyone that does have NAV that has any limited users today, I just want to point out that you can't take a limited user and just migrate it over to a full user. So if I had 10 users, and eight of them were full users, and then I had two limited users, and all of a sudden I needed to add more functionality for the limited users, I, I would have to order two more full users, and then we would suggest that you take the two limited users off of your license. 
So here's a couple questions or some criteria to help in selecting what type of licensing would be best for your business. You definitely want to use a full user if they're going to be a super user and they're going to process a lot of multiple transactions during the day. Heavy processor. They need to post transactions or they're going to utilize many of the customizations that you have. Not all companies have a lot of customizations, but if you have customizations that are inherent in a lot of your processes, the team user is limited by how many custom customizations can be incorporated in their roles. We would suggest selecting a team user if the person just needs to access and review information. They're going to run reports or they may have a select function that they're running. Um, and there's a variety of select functions that a team user can do that does not require a full user. Now let's just take a look at, you know, how the, the costs line up. Okay, there's really two different flavors. We have an on-prem for Business Central and we have a cloud. So the differences between the two is the on-prem is you're going to purchase, you make a one-time purchase, you're going to get a perpetual license. And with the cloud version, you're subscribing to that and you're paying a, a fee per user per month. We talked about full users. So if we were going to purchase a full user on an on-prem license, it's $2,000 per user, whereas it's $45 per month. And you'll notice the premium has more functionality in it, so it's slightly higher than the essential. Okay, if we look at a team user, team user is $400, and that's regardless of whether it's the essential or the premium. Um, and then it's $8 for the cloud. One of the differences between the on-prem and the cloud is if you do have a perpetual license, you are paying an annual maintenance. Whereas if you're subscribing to the cloud model, you're running on Azure, then there is no annual maintenance. So I know that was a lot of information that I covered, but I'd like to open it up if anybody has any specific questions that they'd like to ask. Thank you, Pat. We do have a couple of questions. First one is, can I utilize both full and limited users? Yes, you can. So in the nav side, you can utilize both full and limited. You can, um, the way that that works is that when you set the user up, you would, um, you would define which one they are. And then over on the Business Central side, you can have full and team licenses. So you can combine them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And can I move from a limited to a full user or vice versa? No, so that's okay. The limited is more related to the older NAV versions. And you can certainly um, acquire, you can certainly get additional full users, but there's no migration path that if you invested, say, in a limited user and it was, say, $400 or $600, you, there's no investment that you're going to get back when you move to a full user. So we would recommend that you purchase your full users. And then if you really don't need the limited users, especially if it's a perpetual license, take them off the license so you don't have to pay the annual maintenance on them. Okay. And is there a cost difference between the yes. different licenses, full yes. or limited? Right, so that was what, I can go back to that screen. Let me just back up here. Yes, so there is, there is definitely cost differences. Just within the full user family, we have essential and premium, so there's some differences there. And clearly, you can see there's a significant difference between the team user and a full user. So when you're looking at what kind of licensing you need, it really is a good exercise to go through. So to lay out a matrix of, you know, the users in your company, take a look at the functionalities that they're going to need. 
because it's a significant savings if you can get away with a team user. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then if we have additional apps, such as an ISV, would this require a full user? Um, once again, it depends on what the individual is doing with the app. So you could have, say you had Charge Logic, and you brought that in. Um, someone that's going to be processing like the settlements, the authorizations and all of that, they would have to be a full user. But if you had someone that was maybe going to like just look at something related to um, charge logic, you you may be able to get away with a team license. We actually have to take a look and see exactly what that person's going to be doing because there are some limitations on the number of tables that are available to them and also the number of tables that they can write to. So um, I think it comes back to we, we actually have to take a couple steps back and take a look at exactly what is this team user going to do. But we're more than happy to take a look at it and, and help with, yes, they definitely need a full user or, hey, you could get away with a team user. Okay, thank you. And what would be the driver for a full user session? Okay, um, I think if I just back up here a little bit, this was, goes back to that screen here. Um, I think I would focus on those top three things. If they're going to be in the system, heavy user every day, doing a lot of like transactions, um, they're going to need to post transactions, or there's a lot of customizations that you have in your system that may have a lot of additional objects that were set up. The team user is limited by how many objects, customized objects they can access. So I would definitely say they would need to be a full user. Any type of administrator, they're going to be a full user. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. If anybody else has any further questions that you would like Pat to address, please feel free to type those into the questions box. If not, um, you can contact your account manager and we can get those addressed for you. And um, you can also contact Pat as well. I believe she has her information up on this next slide. So I just want to thank you, Pat, for presenting and to everyone on today's webinar. Or if you're watching on demand, uh, we just want to thank you for joining us. And I do want to let you know that we have a few more webinars coming soon. Uh, actually, this afternoon, Gino Pack from Anovia Consulting will be presenting on Microsoft Flow is now Power Automate. And then Pat will be back with us tomorrow, like she had mentioned. Um, tomorrow morning, she's going to be presenting on license brainstorming, starter versus extended pack in Business Central. So if you're interested in any of our upcoming webinars, um, you can go to our website, and that's enovia.com slash events. And Enovia has a podcast that we have uh, going on, if you haven't heard of it already. It's called the Inovia Conversation, and we want to encourage you to listen to our selection that Steve and Jeff have provided to us over the last year. They do about two episodes per month, and you can find out about all the different podcast platforms to listen to on our podcast page, and that's inovia.com slash podcast. So check out that podcast selection and subscribe so you'll be notified when those new episodes air. And we will be having our annual customer conference coming up in May on the 20th and 21st here in South Bend, Indiana. Contact your rep or visit our conference page where we will have all the details for our conference, and that's anovia.com slash conferences. This is a free event to attend, and we would love to have you, so register now so you don't miss out on this great event. All right, well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Pat, for the presentation. And we look forward to seeing you again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone.